So hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, thick walls of the left ventricle, it can affect large regions of the left ventricle or just focal areas, and this can result in um, poor relaxation of the ventricle and you end up with an increase in left atrial pressure. Some cats with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy will also develop dynamic outflow tract obstruction. So this is where you have um, abnormal movement during systole of the anterior mitral leaflet. This moves over towards the septum and causes obstruction of the left ventricular outflow tract. So there's turbulent flow and also mitral regurgitation. This occurs in human HCM also, and it's often responsible for the murmur that we hear in cats that have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. But it, the increase in obstruction and the increase in pressure that's generated means that the left ventricle is doing more work and it predisposes to myocardial ischemia. We know that people can get chest pain with dynamic outflow tract obstruction in HCM. We really have no idea whether that occurs in cats as well. Dilated cardiomyopathy is a lot less common than it used to be now that dietary taurine levels are usually well controlled by pet food manufacturers. Um, poor systolic function, so it looks very different from hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and um, we don't know what's responsible for it in most cats. Restrictive cardiomyopathy, there are two forms. There's one form characterised by bridging scar in the left ventricle, so often complex fibrous uh, bands across the middle of the left ventricle, and a myocardial form which uh, looks like a relatively normal left ventricle, but the ventricle is stiffer than normal and problems in filling result in an increase in atrial pressures. Arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy is characterised by um, replacement of the normal myocytes in the right heart by fibrous tissue or fatty tissue, resulting in gross dilation of the right atrium or right ventricle. And this also acts as a substrate for arrhythmias. So either ventricular arrhythmias or atrial arrhythmias may develop. These cats can sometimes develop um, right-sided heart failure, which is less common with, than with the other types of cardiomyopathy. So that's just a, a brief overview of some of the main types of heart disease that we see. But it can be challenging to identify the different types, particularly if you don't have access to echocardiography. And echoing cats is difficult. So uh, for most general practitioners, identifying the specific type is not the key question. Um, you may want to go on and, and identify which cats need treatment or which cats don't need treatment. And we'll talk about this in the next sessions.